Richard Southern back with us this hour to talk some of the day's more interesting stories. And Richard, the White House is getting creative when it comes to promoting the COVID-19 vaccines. Yeah, uh, how do you encourage reluctant Americans to get the shot, Erica? Well, apparently you turn to the deadliest catch, country music and NASCAR. <laughs> yes, the White House today said it's buying ad time, uh, you know, uh, using public service announcements to try and persuade Americans to get the shot. And they're buying this ad time on the deadliest catch, which is that, you know, reality show about catching crabs off the coast. There they are off the coast of the uh, uh, Alaska. Uh, they're also buying time on the CMT Country Music Channel and on NASCAR broadcasts. I guess that's where they think their audience is, Erica. <laughs> they got to reach recent, the widest audience, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> they did, or a certain segment thereof. <laughs> a recent poll of the states found white evangelical Christians were the most likely to say they wouldn't get the vaccine. You know, I want the vaccine so bad, Erica, I'm even willing to sit through a few hours of CMT <laughs> and NASCAR. I actually kind of like the deadliest catch. I don't mind admitting to you. But, I don't yeah. think I, I've ever watched it before, but it looks a little terrifying. Uh, yeah. they, they make a lot of money uh, fishing for crab, but they said it's the deadliest job in the world. Apparently, it looks like it. It certainly yeah. looks like it. All right, we're tracking developments in Japan where there are plans to release nuclear wastewater into the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, I mean, that headline, right? It's mm. like, whoa, uh, how what could possibly go wrong here, right? But uh, Japan can, is contending that this is safe and something that they have to do. This, of course, comes back to... Uh, the uh, tsunami uh, back in 2011 and the subsequent meltdown there at the Daiichi nuclear plant. Uh, uh, and uh, what had happened was they had used water to cool the rods over all these years, and they stored that water in big tanks. And it's the equivalent of 500 Olympic-sized swimming pools worth of water. Now they got to get rid of it, Japan says, but they're treating it to reduce the radiation levels, and they're going to slowly release it into the Pacific Ocean over many decades. Despite the claims that it's safe, uh, it sparked outrage from environmentalists and, and fisheries and foreign governments. And boy, what a pickle they found themselves in with that. And I guess that's one of the reasons why I believe Japan has basically said, hey, we want to get away from, from nuclear power going uh, forward. It here. makes me nervous uh, hearing that. And uh, do they need to do it now in the middle of a pandemic? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. And the Olympics coming up over there, too, and yeah. everything. So, yeah. Okay. And finally, some good news to end your day. Canada has been named the best country in the world. We knew that, right, Erica? Yeah. We're number one. <laughs> we knew that. But this is pretty cool. Uh, we are literally are number one in the annual best rankings of countries. They have the best country report out. This is the sixth annual one. It's the first time Canada has been number one. The report looks at 79 countries and 76 different metrics, including economics, military, human rights, gender equality, and quality of life. And sure enough, we were number one. Uh, speaking of Japan, it was number two, followed by Germany, Switzerland, and Australia. Good to hear, don't you think? That's, that's some good news to end, uh, to end our chat today. Thanks, Richard. We'll see you again tomorrow. <laughs> see you tomorrow.